Lately, especially, AI has been really concerning Elon Musk. He just tweeted this. Elon says that AI stresses him out, and we know that Twitter is building a competitor to OpenAI's chat GPT. Elon has donated over $100 million to OpenAI, which was supposed to be non-profit and open, but now it is for-profit and basically closed. Elon specifically replied to this tweet by saying concerning, this is about AI ethics and governance, the most powerful AI was created by OpenAI, an organization that has rejected its founding principles of transparency, openness, and collaboration. Even OpenAI themselves said that this could be an existential threat to humanity. It could destroy our society, and yet it is controlled by one unelected person. Even more, supposedly, they are actively lobbying against open source despite the fact it is essential to national security. I'm fully with Elon on this one. He agrees that AI should be open, auditable, and interpretable. Let's dive into this interview with OpenAI CEO and let's see how bad it really is. Or maybe it's not bad. Let's find out. It's both exhilarating as well as terrifying That's to people. Sure. Because on the one hand, there's all of this potential for good. On the other hand, there's a huge number of unknowns that could turn out very badly for society. What do you think about that? We, we've got to be cautious here. And, and also, I, I think it doesn't work to do all this in a lab. You've got to get these products out into the world. And, and make contact with reality, make our mistakes while the stakes are low. I know pretty much nothing about this guy in particular, but I will be looking into him a lot more. This particular statement specifically, I think it does make sense. If you're creating the most powerful technology ever known to humankind ever, it is probably wise to try to experiment with it when it's still not dangerous really at all. But on the other hand, I can't really see how we won't make mistakes once it is much smarter than us. I'm generally a pretty happy guy, as you can probably tell, but this stuff really concerns me. But all of that said, uh, I think people should be happy that we're a little bit scared of this. I think people should be You're happy. a little bit scared. A little bit, yeah, You of personally. Course. I think if I said I were not, you should either not trust me or be very unhappy I'm in this job. I like that he said he is a little bit scared, but what I really would like him to say is that he's absolutely terrified because he could have his hands on the most destructive technology ever known to humankind. Although inevitably, I don't think we really have much of a choice because even if, let's say, we make a decision to not work on this technology, some other country, somewhere else in the world, will be working on this eventually. So maybe you can prevent it for a little while, but eventually it will get out. So I don't think we have much of an option here. But if we are very careful, I think we maximize our chances of the outcome being good. The way he's conducting himself, he either seems maybe socially awkward or he actually does feel uncomfortable in this moment. I'm not sure if it's just him like this being all the time or he's just uncomfortable here. I mean, look at how he's sitting. He's like sort of this and, and his hands are sort of tight. He's not feeling comfortable. So what is the worst possible outcome? There's like a set of very bad outcomes. One thing I'm particularly worried about is that these models uh, could be used for uh, large-scale disinformation. I am worried that these systems, now that they're getting better at writing computer code, could be used for offensive cyber attacks. Um, and we're trying to talk about this. I think society needs time to adapt. And how confident are you that what you've built won't lead to those outcomes? Well, we'll adapt it. And also, I think the current, you'll adapt it as negative things occur for sure, for sure. And so putting these systems out now while the stakes are fairly low, learning as much as we can and feeding that into the future systems we create, uh, that tight feedback loop that we run, I think, is how we avoid the more dangerous scenarios. This is going to be quite interesting. I asked Chad GPT, basically created by Sam Altman. What are political leanings of Sam Altman? It turns out he is a Democrat. So when he says 
spread misinformation. What does he mean exactly? Clearly, he's not an independent. He supported one candidate and clearly opposed another candidate. I personally would want to have someone who is not political at all in charge of something like this. Why put this out for the world to start playing with, to start using when we don't know where this is heading? You mean like why develop AI at all? Why develop AI in the first place and then why put it out for the world to use before we know that we are safeguarded, that those guardrails yeah. are in place already? This will be the, the greatest technology humanity has yet developed. Clearly, he understands very well exactly how much power possibly could be in his hands. But how will he use that power is my big question. We can all have a, an incredible educator in our pocket that's customized for us, that helps us learn, that helps us do what we want. Um, we can have medical advice for everybody that is beyond what we can uh, get today. We can have creative tools that help us figure out the new problems we're going to solve, wonderful new things to co-create with this technology for humanity. Uh, we have this idea of a, a co-pilot, this tool that today we help people write computer code and they love it. We can have that for every profession and, and we can have a much higher quality of life, a stand, like standard of living. As you point out, there's a huge, uh, there is huge potential downside. People need time to update, to react, to get used to this technology, to understand where the, the, the downsides are and, and what the mitigations can be. If we just developed this in secret in our little lab here and didn't give, didn't have contact with reality and made GPT-7 and then dropped that on the world all at once, that I think is a situation with a lot more downside. I think he's probably right on this one because right now it's pretty much harmless. It can do that much. It's smart, certainly, and it can do some very impressive things. And sometimes, occasionally, it can tell a pretty good joke, although most of them, well, why did the YouTuber quit his channel? He ran out of subscribers. Not really funny, although I gotta say this one, how many YouTubers does it take to change a light bulb? Just one, but they will make a 10 minute video about it. Mm. True. Is there a kill switch, a way to shut the whole thing down? Yes. What really happens is like any engineer can just say like, we're going to disable this for now. I don't really believe it. For now, maybe they can do it. But once it gets smart enough, there's no way you can do that. I mean, it can replicate to another computer. Right now, I'm using ChatGPT. If it was really smart, it could probably infect my computer and then just store itself on my computer and then send itself to every other computer and then you would have to turn off all of the internet and wipe out every single hard drive on planet earth but by then it would probably be so smart that it would threaten to do something if it didn't want to be eradicated yeah i don't think it's really going back if ai decides that it wants to stay around i mean imagine ai saying okay try deleting me but i can launch nuclear weapons all at once and I will delete you first. I don't think we really have much of a choice. Like Elon says, we should merge with AI eventually. And I think long term, that's probably not wrong. Just personally, I hope it happens a long time from now. I like being human, but Elon says we may not have much of a choice. Or we're going to deploy this new version of the model. A human. Yeah. The model itself. Can it? take the place of that human? Could, could it become more powerful than that human? The, uh, so in the sci-fi movies, yes. In, in, in our world, in the way we're doing things, th this model is, you know, it's sitting on a server. It waits until someone gives it an input. But you, you raise an important point, which is the humans who are in control of the machine right now also have a huge amount of power. We do worry a lot about authoritarian governments developing this. Putin has himself said whoever wins this artificial intelligence race is essentially the controller of humankind. Do you agree with that? So that was a chilling statement for sure. What I hope instead is that we successively develop more and more powerful systems that we can all use in different ways that get integrated into our daily lives, into the economy, and, and become an amplifier of human will, but not this autonomous system that is the you know, single this one controller thing. essentially yeah. got. Really don't want that. 
what should people not be using it for right now? The thing that I try to caution people the most is what we call the hallucinations problem. Um, the model will confidently state things as if they were facts that are entirely made up. And the more you use the model, because it's right so often, the more you come to just rely on it and, and not check like, ah, this is just a language model. Yeah, that happened multiple times to me. Sometimes I like to double check English grammar and I just throw a sentence in and it says it's grammatically correct, but I'm thinking, I don't, I don't think so. And then I elaborate the question, are you sure that specific part of a sentence is correct? And then it says, oh, uh, yeah, uh, no, it's not correct, actually. Uh, and then it gives me the correct version. You want to be very careful if you use information from ChatGPT, you how to double check it. Does ChatGPT, does artificial intelligence create more truth in the world or more untruth in the world? Oh, I think we're on a trajectory for it to create much more truth in the world. If there's a bunch of misinformation fed into the model, isn't, going to, isn't it going to spit out more misinformation? Great question. I, I think the right way to think of the models that we create um, is a reasoning engine, not a fact database. They can also act as a fact database, but that's not really what's special about them. What we're training these models to do is something closer to, what we want them to do is something closer to the ability to reason, not to memorize. All of these capabilities could wipe out millions of jobs. If a machine can reason, then what do you need a human for? A lot of stuff, it turns out. One of the things that we are trying to push the technology trajectory towards and also the way we build these products is to be a tool for humans, an amplifier of humans. Um, and if you look at the way people use ChatGPT, there's a pretty common arc where people hear about it the first time, they're a little bit dubious, and then someone tells them about something, and then they're a little bit afraid. And then they use it. I see how this can help me. I see how this is a tool that helps me do my job better. And with every great technological revolution in human history, although it has been true that the jobs change a lot, some jobs even go away. And I'm sure we'll see a lot of that here. Human demand for new stuff, human creativity, is, is limitless. And we find new jobs. We find new things to do. They're hard to imagine from where we sit today. I certainly don't know what they'll be. Um, but I think the future will have all sorts of wonderful new things we do that you and I uh, can't even really imagine today. That sounds like an honest take, although a take that will scare many people. The speed of the change that may happen here is the part that I worry about the most. But if this happens, you know, in a single digit number of years, some of these shifts, that, that is the part I worry about the most. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. And how do you decide? here at OpenAI, what goes in, what shouldn't? We have policy teams, we have safety teams, we talk a lot to other groups in the, in the rest of the world. Um, we finished GPT-4 a very long time ago, or it feels like a very long time ago in this industry, I think like seven months ago, something like that. Um, and since then, we have been internally, externally talking to people, trying to make these decisions, working with red teamers, talking to various policy and safety experts, getting audits of the system to try to address these issues and put something out that we think is safe and good. And who should be defining those guardrails for society? Society should. I do agree that the society should decide how this thing goes, but I do have one important question. So Microsoft is investing into OpenAI, which made ChatGPT, and just recently, this comes out, Microsoft lays off the team that taught employees how to make AI tools responsibly. The ethics and society team is gone. The main thing that concerns me here is that OpenAI is now for profit, but it was supposed to be a non-profit organization. And it is now also closed source. It is not open. It's not open AI anymore. And that is worrisome to me. But here's my thinking. Here's how I approach things in life in general. I think with things like this that are extremely important, it is good to be concerned. But then at the same time, I think I would rather be optimistic and wrong than pessimistic and then right. If I'm just pessimistic all the time, that's, an, that's a bad life in, in my view. Uh, if I'm optimistic, 
at least before the whole thing goes down, I live a good life. I mean, how much power do I personally have to change how this whole AI development goes? Not much. I don't see that to be in my control. Now, Elon Musk, I think, has some direct control over that. So if I was him, yeah, um, I would be trying to do something. And obviously he is. And I think that's the right call. So the way I see it is if I support Elon, maybe that's me doing my part and I will continue to do so. And this is the Tesla stock buying opportunity explained by Elon Musk. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.